love this watercolor cotton. I have this little piece left over from another skirt. Queen of skirts has to use this up. Show you what I'm gonna make. Coming up. Queen of skirts here. <laughs> Making another skirt. Go figure. I must have a good 20 in my closet right now. And uh, my goal is to have 30, so I have one for each month. Probably have to get 31 in case we have 31 days. A new skirt every day, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so I have some that are from for the fall, and then some for like summer, so I'm gonna have to have 60. Yeah, I'll work it out. But I just made this skirt. It's the butterfly skirt right here. And um, I found this fabric, I think, I'm not sure, I think it was at Hobby Lobby. But I remember, I remember buying it. I just don't remember where I was. <laughs> Because I remember going, I love this print. It's like a watercolor. I was thinking it was a batik. But um, batiks are like wax designed. I think it's just some kind of dyed uh, watercolor print. It's just, I just love it. I don't know. It just makes me happy. Makes me happy. <laughs> so I have this little piece left over. It's a little less than a yard. And what am I going to make out of it? But actually... I just kind of folded it and put it away, but then I was going through, I had some fabric donated to the studio here for the school, and um, I was gonna, I had a little bag of, I had a bunch of bags of donating fabric, and then I had one I was kind of on the fence with, but then I looked at it, I'm like, you know, I really gotta just, I, I just got too much fabric. Such a problem. <laughs> um, but I found this in the stash, and I was just really gonna go like, I don't need this. And then I somehow, I went, Wow, wait a second. This is an exact match, well, close to an exact match, of this fabric. Oh my gosh. So, I was like, well, it looks like I gotta make another skirt. <laughs> what am I gonna do? So, I'm gonna make, I'm actually writing a book on my three favorite skirts. Um, I don't know what it's gonna be titled yet, but it'll be, I'm working on it. So, I'm making a bunch of these skirts. This is the rosy. Um, I have the pattern right here, so it's the rosy, and um, it's the square circle skirt. The pattern looks like a big square with a donut in it, like this. That's the on a fold right there, and uh, so simple to make, just straight edges of a hem, and so many variation possibles. That didn't sound right, but okay. Um, so I'm going to make this exact skirt again and this was out of silk georgette oh my gosh i love it but i'm gonna do the yoke in this that's the other my butterfly skirt the yoke in that the top skirt in this and then i found this silk it's like a washed silk charmeuse that goes beautifully with this <laughs> so i am going to tackle the skirt and uh make another one what the heck? I gotta make a bunch of them for my book. So um, you're gonna see a lot of these rosies around and it'd be fun to follow me along and see the different variations. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna cut this out, really easy to cut. There's some more kind of tears. It's just a square and then I'll just cut the little round part uh, in here like that and then cut the yoke. I'm getting really good at these. I can probably start doing them in my sleep. So, <laughs> you know, when I learned how to sew, I started with, um, I made a frog, and this is after I tackled, a, I started a summer skirt, or summer, an orange dress, I remember, and I couldn't finish it. I was, I think it was 11 or 12, and my mom had to finish it. And then I went to frogs, and I made 30 of those. So um, I find my students do the same thing. I have a student in here um, who, she's 13, and she's been making dinosaurs. She came up with a pattern, and she buy it, and I have yet to see the dinosaur. I keep going. And I've even given her fabric for to make dinosaurs with, and I still have not seen the dinosaur. But she's made about 30 of them, and she's selling them at school. So anyway, that's a side topic. So um, anyway, I'm going to get to my skirt. All right, have my fabric all laid out nice and straight. This charmeuse likes to move around a lot. And then I'm just going to mark this around here 
has put little dots like this because if you drag it then it moves the fabric around. And I'm going to make a center mark here also. And my notches come here and I'll put out the notch there. Then toss them there, that one over there, and then put a few pins here and just cut it that way. So how this skirt works is this layer is the full layer and then the next layer which is the chiffon will be the um, uh, be two inches smaller um, just in the length and I just cut the big hole in. okay I'm gonna put a couple little nips in here because those marks will disappear I'll put, I'll put V's here so it's probably the center front and center back and nips there and that will be the side seam yes okay there's that one cut out i just got to cut the other layer and just make it two inches shorter i mark okay you got this one cut put a safety pin on the top the right side i think that's it <laughs> put that to the side now i have to cut the yoke now I'll cut two of these. One for the front, one for the back. Okay, I'm gonna get some little notches. I like to put little V's in the centers of the yoke. So when I go to do the elastic and connect everything, I'll just go I ahead and pin this now. Wow, it's so pretty. Just love this print. I'll go ahead and put these right sides together. And be ready to sew those five eighths of an inch straight down and then press them open. I don't think I'm going to have a lining to this. Ooh, I might want to. Huh, I don't need it. But this fabric did wrinkle a little bit on my butterfly skirts. So actually, it would really help the wrinkles. So I think I'll, I think I have a navy fabric. I'll line this with, I could line it with the silk, which I think would be really comfy. I think I might do that. I have, I do have extra. I don't know, I have to look. Oh wait, that's the, don't cut that. That is the skirt. <laughs> that's happened before. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now what I need to do is go and I'm just gonna press and all these a half an, or an inch and then tuck it under and get all these hems all the corners hemmed on both the sides so just I press it first in one inch then tuck it under and press it again so it looks like that and then I stitch alongside that and then the whole skirts all hemmed um, before you even put it together and it just makes it really um, a fast easy skirt I'm gonna go do that I'm actually also going to cut out the bias um, right now because whenever I'm putting these together I always have to stop and cut stuff out. I like to cut all at once. So I think I'll cut the bias out. I need about 45 inches. I'm going to use this by this fabric for the bias that intersects between the yoke and the skirt. All right, I'm going to cut out this bias. I get this all lined up. I have some damaged spots on the silk so I'm just going to actually miss it right here. Because when you're in this little corner it doesn't matter. Although there's a tiny tiny spot right there. I know I'm not doing that. So I need about 45 inches of bias. So let's see and get it started here with a 45 degree angle. Get it started there. And then this way. And lightly mark it. And I want I want about a half an inch to a five-eighths inch band. So figure about two and a half inches wide on the elastic or on the bias. It's kind of drag because this ruler is two inches and I could mark it. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is make it easier to cut. Let's do some little dash marks. 
Now these invisible rulers sometimes fade out this color fabric. Anything with a little bit of purple in it um, will fade. So I'm going to make sure these marks, but they're, they'll only be half an inch in, so they'll hide no matter what. Now I'm going to do another, I'm going to do my real mark half an inch past those dash marks. So then I'll have a two and a half inch strip. When you do work with fabric like this, you got to make sure you're not stretching and pulling. Oops, pulling the fabric. So delicate. Is it move, all this moves around. <laughs> I'm used to working with this fabric. It's a, to make a lot of wedding gowns back in the 90s. That was a long time ago. Okay, so there's one strip that. About it's going to give me a good 21 inches, and then the next one will be longer. Right, take these out, my little anchor pins out. Try not to move the fabric and cut these. Ah, there's a nice straight line. I'll go ahead and get this one. Oof, there we go. Two of those now. I gotta. So these together, move that like that, turn that right there. I'm going to be sewing that a quarter of an inch, right about there. I always test it to make sure, press it open, it's going to be flush with each other. That's all I need. Alright, have those main pieces cut out. Now I'm going to spend the next hour hemming the edges of these big squares. It take me it take longer to press it than it will to sew it. It take about an hour. I'm gonna time myself. <laughs> Alright. Just a little under an hour. Got both of them hemmed and it uh, stay stitched together. Looks like this. Wow. So if you really want to get good at pressing Make one of these skirts. <laughs> like this uh, poly chiffon. You have to press it, let it cool. So put a pressing block on it, let it cool. Press it, let it cool. Press it, let it cool. Then I go back and I fold it under. Press it, let it cool. Because it's polyester and it needs to cool to keep its shape, to get a strong crease in there. This stuff here um, irons much better. Um, and it, it sticks. Well, actually, it's kind of it's a suede charmeuse, so it's kind of sticks. So it's a you have to kind of iron it like this. There's no sliding. <laughs> so this will get you really good at uh, pressing. And pressing is the key to everything looking really sharp and uh, professionally done. So um, that is the skirt or that part. Now I'm gonna take a break. So um, I got the bias pressed and pinned on and now I got to do is uh, stitch I'm going to just do a basting stitch on there and then I've got the yoke already I'm going to add the yoke to it I have to turn it uh, see I have all my notches on there it's good to know where your centers are centers and sides so then I'll just uh, put the yoke on there stitch it up and then uh, put the elastic on it's almost finished it's getting there all right, I'm going to go base that bias on, and then I'll show you how I'm going to put the yoke on. All right, to start by making sure I have the print I want, um, just that I like the best, to be in the front. So I put a little F right here, and uh, just kind of don't want that to be right in the middle. So it's pretty, but <laughs> I'd rather have it just kind of subtle blue. Then I have my front right here, make sure that's on there, and then... Uh, looks like I have my center front notch right here, and then my notch right there, and then I'm just going to start it this way and pin it around and make sure my, hopefully these all fit good, I usually have. Um, there's no side seams on here, but I have my notches, so I got my side seam there. in there. Let's see. So that's the one quarter of it. 
and it looks like really match up well. If the first quarter matches up, then chances are the rest of the quarters will match up. So I'm just going to pin all these on and then I'm going to go around this um, in a 5 8 inch mark or so or seam all the way. And then it'll end up looking like that. So I'm going to go and sew this. Okay, I have my seam guide on there. So on the silk side, now I'm going to start at the seam allowance, the side seam, right there. I'm just going to start here, get that first pin out. And I think I'll put this on um, kind of a, not too short of a stitch. I'll put it on speed control on medium to get it going using my silk pins. Feel bumps under there. What is that? Must be the bias connection. Just take my time, go around it, make sure it's all right there. Just five eighths as even as I can get it. And then that bias strip will turn out really even. Okay, coming in for the home stretch here. This will match up. Puckers, yes. Tiny little, tiny little pucker. Oh, got it. Right on there. First back. Oh, I got five eighths pretty exact. Flip it out. Now, looking good. Oh, nice. This part's so important. <laughs> This charmeuse just likes to curl. Okay, the cotton's really easy to work with with these charmeuses. Now I'm going to take it to the ironing board and uh, press it all, press that seam up actually towards the yoke. Ta da! I pressed it up and it looks really good. It's got a little, couple little waves in there, but that's kind of what the silks do. The slippery fabrics, just you can't get them exact. The cotton biases, oh, they're nice and sharp. But that's good. I'm, I'm happy. This looks so pretty. Oh my gosh. Now all I have to do is get the uh, lining, which is this one. I got ambiance. This is soft. They don't make this anymore. It's a rayon lining and uh, it's just soft. Oh, love it. And uh, yeah, they don't, they're not making it anymore. Oh, so sad. Um, but I still have I've got a few colors left. So um, press these seams open. I'm going to baste the, oh, actually, I'm also going to press up the bottom part a half an inch because uh, after I get the elastic in there, and then I'll uh, flip it and then enclose the seam in there and stitch it. I'll show you that. I like to hand stitch that part because it um, uh, keeps the seam up. And then there, there is a technique to sew it um, all together, but it never kind of goes accurate. So I like to just hand stitch it. It takes about 10 minutes more. Actually, only about 10 minutes, not even more, because by the time you plan out all the adding, it's you put got to put 10 minutes into it anyway. <laughs> I'm saying that because my students are always like, hand stitching. Oh, and I'm always like, it's like it takes a few minutes, you know? <laughs> so, um, okay. We'll go to the iron, baste this onto the skirt, and um, then I have to put the elastic on. Have my lining basted in. Yeah, almost done. <laughs> have my elastic prepped. I love this uh, Dritz when it's fold over elastic. It only comes in black and white. Uh, but nobody ever sees my waistband anyway because I always wear a shirt over it. That's why I wore the navy shirt again so I could wear this skirt later. <laughs> but, um, so now what I need to do here is find the half and then the quarters and then put them on the side seams in the front and then stretch it as I go and then do a zigzag. I have a whole video out on how to do this in detail um, because this is just the best invention. You know, they didn't have this fold over elastic when I was younger. But then my waist was like the usual 10 inches smaller than the hips. 
waistbands in and uh, darts and all that kind of stuff. So now, now it's square. Now I just need a little bit of a grip. <laughs> anyway, that's what this stuff does for you. All right, I'm going to get this put on and finish this skirt up. Ta-da! That was so easy. I'm getting like so good at this. <laughs> I've done probably 50 of these already. But this is how it's looking. All I have to do now is attach the lining to this uh, seam here. I'm just going to do a little quick slip stitch with a single thread so it's real thin and then uh, attach it. And then I probably should try this on because if it doesn't fit, well, I make these all the time, so um, I'm sure it's going to fit. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch this, and I'll show you how it looks on the dress form. Got the skirt done. Ta-da! Wow. I love when fabrics match all together. This looks so pretty. So three different fabrics, the silk, the suede silk that's going to feel so good on. It's so light and airy. It has some nice uh, weight to it, too, actually. And then um, chiffon and the cotton. So I've got all silk, poly, and cotton all mixed up into one skirt. And all the same dye lots. This is crazy. Wow. This looks so cool. So I don't know if I showed you this in the beginning, but I had uh, my butterfly skirt right here. This is where I came up with that. I had that little scrap. Oh, yes. I think I told you about the scrap part. That was like last week, right? So this is uh, my little butterfly skirt. So now I have matching skirts. I have to wear them at the same time. Can't do that. Anyway, <laughs> that'd be weird. I just had to find somebody my size to wear that. Can we go to a party together? Speaking of parties, I have a, a little thing to go to tonight. My friend just texted me. My friend is in town from Florida. He's um, He sings and plays guitar and uh, piano. His friend plays guitar, yeah. Uh, Dave and Wally, they used to be here in North Carolina, uh, frequented all the music clubs, and uh, they're so much fun, so he's in town, so I'm gonna go and see him tonight. I'm gonna wear this, wear my new skirt, with my blue shoes. I wore my shoes today. Ta-da! <laughs> little sandals, and uh, yeah, it should be fun. So, take a look in your fabric stash. Can you make a skirt simple like that? So I hope I inspired you to do some sewing. Go get your sojo on. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.